Today, I'm going to talk of the subject of fear and very succinctly, freedom from fear. So stay tuned. Today on the subject of freedom from fear, other words, walking free of an expectation of bad, walking free from fear. I'll tell you, fear is just simply not supposed to be the language of believers in the body of Christ. But why? Because of Jesus. You know, 2 Timothy 1 and starting in verse 6 says this, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. Then this is Paul talking to Timothy, his disciple. Verse 7 says this concerning Timothy. Paul said, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, here he says this, that fear is the spirit. Let me say it this way. When it says, he says that fear is the spirit, in other words, it's spiritually motivated. It's spiritually influenced, in other words, is what he's talking about. We're not necessarily talking about a possession or something like that. No, no, we're just talking about the lies of the devil the lies of the demonic realm in a spiritual influence to influence the heart of an individual, even a believer, to get them to believe the wrong things, to have this expectation of bad established within their heart to the point that they may want good, but it just seems like bad comes easier than good. Because you see here, Paul's talking about the air of timidity. You might think, well, timidity with Timothy, I mean, is that really fear? Well, yes, if you really stop and think about it, it's an influence to stop a person from being able to look to Jesus and look at other people and make life about Jesus in the context of helping other people. Instead, his focus is on himself because he's timid. You know, there's a fear, there's an expectation of bad, a fear of people is what we're talking about here with timidity. You know, this word timidity is talking about a lack of courage or a lack of confidence. If there's a lack of courage or lack of confidence, that means there's a belief established within the heart, maybe in relationship to people, what people think about them. I'm telling you, we draw our self-worth is so important because it's very beneficial for our heart to draw our self-worth from Jesus and not what people think about us. And that, that is a process to bring our heart to the place that We've got more value on Jesus, more value in what he says about us than what people think about us. You just simply don't get to that place by accident. You get to that place on purpose with the help of the Holy Spirit to the point that you love people. But when people have an opposite opinion of you, a ju- critical judgmentalness about you, then you may not like it if you process through it. And you, know, you always by do that by looking to Jesus. You always go, go back to the same truth found in Jesus Christ and you go back to the word and you establish truth found in Christ. Christ and the Word of God to the point that you may love people, but you just let love cover a multitude of sins, and you don't become critical and judgmental, and you take significance off of what they think and what they say, because that's just a human opinion, and they're not God. So you put things in the right perspective with God's perspective. I tell you, he says here that when he calls fear a spirit, he goes on to say, but God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the spirit of the, he's given us, speaking of the spirit of Christ, is of power power, first of all. And then he says, of love and of a sound mind. We're talking about dunamis miracle working power. This is what you have as a believer. You got dunamis miracle working power. You don't want to limit that. You don't want to let go of that dynamite power and just make everything about you while you got all that power just sitting there you know, and it's not being a benefit to you. I tell you, you got the power of the Holy Spirit that'll change you. You got the power of the Holy Spirit that'll help you. You got the power of the Holy Spirit that'll work in you and work through you for the benefit of other people. So you definitely don't want the devil to stop you from having the kind of heart of love and compassion for others to where Jesus working through you to benefit someone else. You want your heart open for Jesus to benefit others. So you don't want that timidity. You don't want that kind of fear that'll limit Jesus working through you. And love, you know, 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 says this, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. Why? Because fear involves torment. He who fears has not been made perfect in love. Verse 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. Being made perfect in love is this. It's a revelation of how much God loves you. You really can't love someone else until you get a revelation of his love for you. So focus on how much he loves you and how he's proven his love to you 
through Jesus Christ and what he's accomplished for you at the cross, when you get a fullness of the revelation of the cross, the fullness of the revelation, the, the greatest gift God has given to mankind, the gift of love, John 3, 16, Jesus. I tell you, when you get a revelation of his love for you, all of a sudden, it just takes significance off of the bad things you go through in life. It's like they're not the same because Jesus is greater. I tell you, when you get a revelation of God's love, it will throw fear right out of your heart because you don't need that kind of torment. Fear would just, I mean, love would just throw it right out of your heart. You know, it goes on to say, in of a, uh, a love in a sound mind. When we're talking about a sound mind here, it's talking about a disciplined mind. That means you're going to train your heart and how you think, the thoughts you think, the seeds you put in the soil of your heart. It involves self-discipline. It involves this area of a sound judgment. Oh, Lord, you, there's some things you just purposely do because you know you need to do it. It's like, as an example, it's like doing something that's beneficial for your life, whether you're talking about eating the right food, reading the right books. In other words, you know, whatever you're doing, the words you speak for the benefit of your heart, you do that even though it feels like it's not working or it's not doing any good. No, you're doing it because you know what you're doing is a benefit and you're, you're putting seeds so the soil, the what grows, what comes up will be a benefit. And the change that'll come up within your life with the help of the Holy Spirit, you're giving them truth to work with. In other words, Paul here said, I remind you of the speaking of Timothy, stir up the gift of God which is in you. This word to stir up means to revive, to stir up, and it's talking about it to inflame like a fire on the inside, to be zealous. I tell you, your heart being zealous for the Lord and zealous for the Word of God, you don't get to that place by accident. You get to that place on purpose. <music> 